Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Today we're going to talk about proxy versus VPN. These are the proxy servers and the VPN servers that have become very popular uh, in the last few years uh, as ways of getting around uh, restrictions, firewalls, uh, any kind of service or country that is imposing uh, a lot of censorship uh, using the internet. So they could both be used. The uh, proxy uh, we're going to learn uh, is a little bit different than the VPN, where the VPN uh, uses what's called tunneling. And tunneling uh, involves some encapsulation and some encryption. So we'll talk about that. But if you look at this diagram here, you can see we have a user here. Uh, he's coming through a firewall and router. This could be a, a firewall and an ISP, Internet Service Provider. And then he's connecting uh, to his server uh, that he's either paying for or finding free but it's uh, either a proxy server or VPN if it's a VPN we're creating a tunnel from the user to the VPN uh, but they both operate uh, pretty much the same except the VPN we're going to find out uh, creates that tunnel or the encryption uh, through some encapsulation and then from that server we create we connect to our websites and what's nice about the proxy VPN uh, we're substituting out our own IP address uh, for the uh, proxy or the VPNs. So it can provide a little bit uh, more security as far as uh, surveillance. Uh, so it, it might be useful. Uh, let's get going here. Uh, proxy. Uh, here we have a user and a uh, proxy server that he's connected to. Proxy allows you to get around firewalls uh, and other restrictions to access public internet. So if you're uh, at a uh, school or have a country or a company that has a lot of uh, restrictions on your internet as far as where you can browse, what sites that you can view, uh, one way of getting through that is getting through your firewall using a uh, proxy that would be available on a server. And uh, a lot of times these don't have the restrictions so you can find them and connect to them without any problem. Uh, it also substitutes uh, your IP address for the proxy, which makes it harder to uh, track users. Now, a lot of the uh, services have logs, but uh, some of them don't have logs. So if they're not keeping logs, uh, they're not actually recording uh, your IP address. But your service provider is in between here somewhere, and they do have logs. So uh, if for some reason you connect to a site that uh, has a problem, and uh, FBI or some other service is trying to track back, uh, they can usually get back to the service provider, and the service provider can provide the IP addresses that uh, have been used, connect to them, and then to uh, some of those services that maybe the uh, FBI or some other service is having problems with. So you need to be careful. Uh, this first uh, became popular where some countries, uh, as I mentioned, try to limit their citizens' internet access. And also is very popular now in the high schools or any of the schools uh, for students to use to get around the school district filters. So they have been used a lot in the classrooms, especially of late. Uh, VPN uh, has become more popular because it's uh, a little more secure. It creates a tunnel between the user and the service. And this tunnel is created through the encapsulation of the packets. Now, everything that is sent through the Internet is, is chopped up into what we call packets, and the packets contain some other information. And you might be sending a letter or some other document, and uh, you might be sending maybe five packets that represent that letter or document. Each one of these packets would, be ha would have the address of where it's going and where it's from, just like a letter. And uh, it would also be enclosed or encapsulated. Uh, with some header information and some of the data that comprises that uh, letter or document. And since we're sending maybe five packets, each packet would be numbered one through five. And uh, when they're received on the other end, if one of those packets is missing, uh, the receiver would just request a resend of that one packet. So it would have all the packets that would be needed uh, to re recreate that document. So a tunnel, it says the tunnel is formed by the encapsulation of the packets. Uh, by an encryption protocol. So the encryption protocol is what's going to actually encrypt this data so that nobody else can read it. Then it's going to create some encapsulation uh, where it creates the packets and encapsulates uh, these packets uh, with some information so that other devices and routers can uh, send them on their way. Uh, the VPN protocols, such as uh, OpenVPN, which is a new one that's supposed to be very good, IPsec, uh, PPTP, 
uh, L2TP, uh, SSL, and TSL. Uh, these all encrypt uh, the data and adds the new header information. This has helped uh, companies to minimize the expenditures of having to use leased lines or private lines that are routed through uh, telephone companies uh, by using existing lines of the public lines, the Internet. Uh, the Internet has the high-speed uh, routing services, uh, trying to keep this stuff uh, moving very quickly. So you don't have the expense of having to lease that, that high-speed routing equipment or having to lease lines. So this can save you quite a bit of money. Uh, the internet to transfer the data more securely uh, using the uh, uh, encryption protocols. Nothing, nothing on the internet, and that's a good note to make, nothing on the internet is ever completely secure. Uh, the PP, PPTP protocol is said to contain user ID and passwords in plain text, and this uh, could be a problem. Uh, usually I think we just have the uh, IP information in plain text, but here we have actually got the uh, password and user ID, so Somebody could caption that, man in the middle or whatever, uh, could create a opportunity for getting that data and possibly uh, circumventing the uh, tunnel and uh, allowing somebody to uh, get the information, or at least your personal information. Uh, VPNs today. Today is being mostly used overseas to circumvent against the Internet uh, website filtering and restrictions. Uh, this is done by rerouting the data using the VPN servers to make it appear uh, to a website that just another local visitor is connected. So if you're connected to a VPN server in another country, then that server can go ahead and connect to some uh, local websites, uh, which to uh, the websites, it will just look like a local user is connected. So for some of the countries that don't allow any foreign visitors, uh, this would be one way of, of connecting and getting, getting connected to some of the local websites. Uh, VPN subscription, uh, subscription software applications uh, substitute the user's IP address that we mentioned before, just like the proxy, uh, and replaces it with the VPN server IP address. So a little more secure for the tracking or surveillance that we're maybe concerned with today. Uh, VPN security, you get uh, what you pay for. So if security is a concern, uh, you need to use a very reliable company that can help uh, best safeguard your data. However, VPNs are also targets and are compromised uh, quite frequently now uh, because people realize or criminals realize that uh, there could be a some data that uh, maybe they are trying to get their hands on or at least some personal information. Uh, for the casual internet surfer, the advantage of not having your data examined by others, surveillance, or criminal cyber criminals might just be the benefit you are looking for, especially if you're in the school situation where the students are just trying to get around a local uh, filter or firewall. Uh, they're very popular. Uh, HTTPS, which is the hypertransfer protocol with the S for security, making it secure. Uh, this is an encryption. Uh, so uh, Gmail and a lot of the other big websites have gone ahead and secured uh, their sessions when you connect to them, uh, just like the banks and uh, other services uh, where there's an exchange of funds. Uh, they've been using that for quite a while. Most websites have moved to the HTTPS, which encrypts your session and helps to make your data more secure. Again, if somebody is uh, determined uh, to get to you or, or capture your data, uh, there are ways for them to do that. So nothing is uh, completely secure. Uh, VPN free uh, VPN services. Uh, there are some surveys, reports, uh, some analysts, other people that have talked about and have suggested that many of the third party free services are nothing more than uh, criminal enterprises trying to gain access to your data, your valuable data, or your personal information. So I would uh, be very careful with any free services out there. Uh, you wouldn't want to be transferring any important or valuable information because it could very easily lose that and also lose your personal information. Uh, that's it. Uh, proxies versus VPN, very similar. Uh, they help to protect your IP address, uh, but only the VPN actually does the encryption or the tunneling through the public IP address or the public internet uh, to allow your data to stay uh, encrypted and that thereby fairly secure. So VPNs have become the more popular uh, device or software application that's being used now both by students and individuals in other countries that are trying to get around any kind of filtering or restrictions. Uh, thank you very much. I'll work on some more. Hope to see you soon. Bye.